Hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, first of all, a warm welcome to OAC training by Uno Geeks. In this video, I'll explain how the default error handling works in OIC. So what happens uh, if an error occurs within an integration flow? Yeah, so uh, to, to understand how the default error handling works, we'll build a simple REST API, which will take in a number input. And we'll keep it simple in the API. We'll just multiply the number with itself and we will send it back as a response. Okay, so let's let's create this API uh, and let's exp and let's use the same API to understand what options are available to handle errors. So we'll try to understand how the default error handling works in this video. And uh, in the next uh, three, four videos, I'll explain the various options that are available in OIC to handle errors. Okay, so let's log into OIC instance. Let's go back to integrations, a designer work area. Click on integrations, integrations again. And I want to create a REST API, which will take in a number input. So I need a trigger connection for that. So I'll create a connection. Since it's a REST API, I'll create a REST connection. And I'll call it as error handling. trigger connection. Change the role to trigger because I just want to use this to trigger the error handling integration that we're going to build. So the connection is 100%, it's configured. You can go ahead and build the integration. Create an app-driven orchestration. And let's call it as you know geeks so give it a name you know geeks error handling rest api and you can put it in error package created and what do what do we want to do in this api we just want to receive number as an input multiply it with the same number multiply it with itself and send that back as a response a pretty simple one change the layout to horizontal use the trigger connection you've configured and we will call it as receive number or we can rather just call it as a default error handling so we'll call the endpoint itself as default error handling oh, let's just take out the default as well I'll just just use error handling as a endpoint name that's fine you can use any name you want for that matter and we want to receive a one a number as input so I'll call it as input number. And the operation is going to be get operation, configure a response, configure this endpoint to receive a response because we need to get back a response as well. So the, this API needs to multiply the number with itself. Say for example, if you pass in three, three into three becomes nine and you have to get back nine as a response. Click on next. You see a template parameter created for, uh, for the a parameter that you included in the URA in flower brackets. Change the sample, a response sample to JSON and enter a sample output. You can just say, call it as a result and you can assign any number for that matter, maybe one or 10 or any number. Click OK and done. Uh, and what do we want to send back? We want to multiply the number with itself and send that back as a response. Create target node. And what do you want to do here? 
you want to multiply the uh, template parameter with itself and send that back as a response and you save it validate enable tracking select input number as a tracking identifier save the api and activate it activate it and we're going to test this api now with uh, with uh, two values we'll test it with a valid number and we'll test it with a var care value and see what happens so let's try to uh, test it, test the api by passing in a number valid number maybe three test it you get back nine and send in six you should get back 36 so it's working fine but let's see what happens if you pass in an invalid number say maybe uh, i pass it as 6a test it and see what happens what happened it resulted in an error that's because we were trying to multiply a two strings which is not a valid uh, valid one so you've got an internal server error and if you scroll down you see you see that unmap a fault execute error so if you scroll down again you will see that there is an xpath expression failed to execute so if you remember in the mapper we have we were multiplying the input number with itself so but you cannot multiply six uh, multiply two strings and because of that uh, the xpath expression or the mapper expression has failed okay so but you can if it, it, it doesn't look good if you pass in uh, this error message back to the client right so he won't be able to probably understand what might have gone wrong okay so first of all this is how the uh, default error handling works so in case an error occurs within the api so let's go to the monitoring section monitor integrations Okay, we have sent in three requests, two of them are with valid numbers and they went through successfully. But the third one, we have passed in an, a string instead of number and it resulted in an error. And if you look at the error, so what happened? Uh, a number was received and in the mapper, we were multiplying it with itself. So this has thrown an error. error. And because of that, uh, this, uh, yeah, this, this could not be executed uh, successfully. So if you look at the activity stream again, if you look at the activity stream, you activity stream, you see that uh, error has been raised at the mapper. Okay, so this is how uh, a default error handling works. So in case you, you don't do anything uh, with respect to error handling, in case you don't handle errors in the integration, this is how it behaves. So uh, integration exits abruptly, process stops abruptly, the status becomes errored, and the client will receive an, uh, a very lengthy error message, which, which um, probably client would not be able to make a head or tail out of it, okay? So to handle that, so it, you definitely have to handle errors, right? So what options do you have when you have to handle errors? So we'll talk about those options in the next video. So we have seen how the error how the default error handling works. And in the next video, I will explain how to handle errors at two levels. Basically, you can handle errors at two levels, at a global level and at a scope level. In the next video, we'll, I'll show you how to explain or, or how to use global fault handler. And in the video after that, I'll explain how to configure a scope level fault handler. Okay, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. In case you are interested in Oracle Integration Cloud Training by UnoGeeks, please call us on this number or send a WhatsApp message. Or you can also send us an email on this uh, mail ID. Or if you want, you can uh, check out the course content on our website, unogeeks.com. Thank you.